Stereotype, a fixed but oversimplified image of a type of person or item. For example, a girl with lighter colored hair miscounts the number of people in her math class. Her peers laugh. She's only having a blonde moment. Move over to the basketball court, where a girl is picked last because the captains just don't want any weak players. And you can't forget the Asians, who are all supposed to love and excel at math, right? We've all seen these stereotypes play out before, and some of us live through it more often than others. But do we know where these common misconceptions come from? And do they affect us more than we think they do? Let's go back to the first stereotype I mentioned, the dumb blonde. Why did a blonde tiptoe pass the medicine cabinet? She didn't want to wake up the sleeping pills. Why did a blonde smile during the lightning storm? She thought she was getting her picture taken. There are thousands upon thousands of blonde jokes found online, and they range from rude to just plain cruel. Many trace the origins of this stereotype back to the 1700s to a woman called Rosalie Duth. Now, Rosalie was a beautiful blonde, but in the play Les Curious Sights de la Foire, she would take long pauses before her lines, leading people to believe that she was dumb in both meanings of the word. Now, d dumb blondes became even more popular in the 20th century because of movie stars such as Jean Harlow and Marilyn Monroe. These two women showed great talent in different areas of acting, but the characters they had to play were always flirtatious comedic relief. And it was all because of one thing, their hair color. I mean, imagine if I was a blonde. <laughs> Might not be the best look, and I would need a better stylist than the one in that picture, but should my intelligence be based on solely that? Now let's move on to the other end of the spectrum. Are there any of my bespectacled friends out there in the audience? <laughs> Woo, represent, yeah. Okay, well, you'll be familiar with this stereotype then. It's the one where your friend grabs your glasses, puts them on, and asks the one question, do I look smarter now? Ah, uh, yes, it's the smart or nerdy people wear glasses stereotype. And it's usually seen in movies where the shy or bookish character always has his or her glasses on. And you know this one character is less likely to get into a fight because glasses are expensive, man. Anyways, the origin of this stereotype comes from the idea that people who spend more time reading and have a higher education will sprain their eyesight and therefore develop myopia. Scientific evidence, though, has proven that this is not true. There is no connection between intelligence and eyesight. But still, this stereotype is widely used today. And maybe now you're starting to wonder, well, what am I uh, doing up here talking about stereotypes? I mean, I must seem like another white person, right? Well, that's where some of you might be surprised, because I'm not white. I'm actually Hispanic. I was born in Caracas, Venezuela, where a big part of my family still lives today. And so when I tell people this, it usually surprises them, as they could have sworn I was European. Or they'll hold their arm up against mine and say, oh, you're actually tanner than I thought. There have been countless of times when people have spoken in Spanish around me and just simply assumed that I did not understand. And the one comment, Oh look, we're all minorities here. Well, that is, except for you, Stephanie. I take no offense in any of it, because I know I don't fit the stereotypical image. My skin isn't necessarily tan enough, I don't have the right facial features, and with a last name like Suster, who would expect it? But other than the personal effects it has had on me, stereotyping can cause effects on a much larger scale. And maybe you'll come in now and argue that by saying, we've grown up around these stereotypes but we know not to take them seriously. That's not exactly true, as proven by the development of math race stereotype study shows. In it, a group of fourth through eighth graders were tested to see if they were either aware or endorsed the Asians are good at math stereotype. This was done by asking the question, most people think Asians are blank at math, and I think Asians are blank at math. The results showed that even in elementary school, students were aware of the stereotype. But in middle school, in sixth grade, they started endorsing it as, this, as their own personal belief. And these results make sense when we look at other studies. For example, the 1995 Aronson and Steele st Stereotype Threat Study. In it, two groups of both black and white students had to take a test. 
one group was told that the test measured their intelligence and their abilities, while the other was told the opposite. Those that were told it did not measure their intelligence and abilities, on that test, both black and white students scored at the same level. But when they were told that it did measure, black students scored severely lower than their white counterparts. It was also recorded that they showed more awareness for the stereotypes behind their race. Another similar study was done in 1999 about stereotype susceptibility. In it, three groups of Asian American women had to take a test. Before taking the test, two of the groups had to fill out a questionnaire. One questionnaire reminded the women of their femininity, while the other reminded them of their Asianness. Those that were reminded of their Asianness scored on the higher end of the scale. Those that were reminded of their femininity scored on the lower end. And those that had neither stereotype activated scored in the middle. So imagine that, just being slightly aware of the stereotypes around them significantly impacted their scores. So in conclusion, stereotyping is an issue that has to be acknowledged. It changes our perspective of ourselves, of our community, and of our world. It goes way back in our history, as proven by Rosalie Duth, and it still affects us here today. Stereotypes close doors for ourselves and the next generation. If we ever want to reach our fullest potential as a society, as a world, we have to let go of these stereotypes that hold us back. Thank you.